Hi, I'm Don Watson. I'm here at Conneaut Township Park. It's Sunday afternoon. The MS Escape to the Lake has taken place. It's done. It's over. It's history. I want to take you back to yesterday morning. Four o'clock in the morning, I left my house in Conneaut, drove down to Zelianople to cover the story behind the scenes. I have some footage for you for some things that took place that you would normally not see. Riders today came in through this uh, arch, this balloon arch, to cheers and music and and uh, ribbons waiting down below. But for them to get there uh, to that point, there were many things that had to go on behind the scenes. A lot of people that helped out in support of the run. And so I'm going to take you and show you what I can, so you get a better idea what goes on, what kind of support, what kind of help is needed uh, to put on such an event. I helped out as a support and gear driver. I took my car and went down there and helped out anybody that had a problem with a bike. If they had a breakdown, if they had a physical problem themselves, we transported the bikes and the riders to the next rest area or today some of them back here to the finish line so that they could get their rides back to their starting point. A lot of the riders were from the Pittsburgh area but there were some local, and we'll have some story on, bo on both of those local and uh, Pittsburgh area riders. And then, of course, some of the support that went along with it. I hope that you enjoy what you see. We good? Yeah, I'm Don Watson. We're here in Harmony, Pennsylvania. And uh, opposite of us is the Seneca Valley High School. I'm with Scott Conley. Scott is uh, in charge of the SAG drivers, sporting gear. Uh, Scott, how many years have you been doing this? This is actually my fifth year organizing the SAGs, working with the uh, MS Society, and I have actually was rode for three years. So, riding, I, I, I haven't ri ridden, and I don't think after seeing these roads, <laughs> I don't think you'll ever get me on a bike to try that. This, this country down this way is a lot more hilly than what we're going to find up in Kanye. Oh, very much so. That's why the second day is the best day, Yeah, because we're in Ohio at that point. It's quite the challenge. Uh, the halfway point, I think it's the halfway point, is Cochranton. Is that right? Uh, the halfway point is actually Allegheny College. Uh, I mean, for today. Oh, uh, for today, yeah, Cochranton's about halfway up there. And after Cochranton is a challenge, isn't it, for the riders? Is yes. that where the big hill comes yeah, up? Yeah, the, uh, the infamous Cochranton Hill, uh, where the people start dropping off at that point. Where we, we get to. We get be to step up assistance. our game at that point, definitely. There was, I think it was two years ago, I was asked, someone knew the route enough that they asked me to get them past the hill. That's right. <laughs> they people, were, they're always trying to buy step it, they're trying to <laughs> sidestep it, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't I don't think it was out of laziness. I think that the gal was being honest. Right, I, I'm with you there. Uh, there's so much that we do besides uh, just helping people get around a rough point in the road, uh, flat tires, a lot of different things we've seen over the years. So what's some of the things that you can remember as far as SAGs that we've done? Well, it's 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 definitely being there for the for the people that need it. Uh, you get people to try to fight not wanting to get in the actual SAG vehicle and keep going on, but sometimes you have to coax them to get in there. You know, you know they're in a bad shape at that point. We've had some people with the, uh, the heat exhaustion, the chills and everything else, but uh, you know, we get them where they need to be, and if we have to, we'll, we'll, we'll take them all the, well, all the way to the end. It's, uh, again, been a real eye-opener to me. One year we had, like you talked about, I think it was two years ago, my first year, where we picked up people that just couldn't keep going because of the cold. Yes, yeah, we had that cold front blow in on Sunday, uh, and, it, and it was it was miserable. It was. And I think that day, though, it was the forecast was for better weather. It was, but it was that lake effect coming off the, off the Erie Lake, and it just blew in and caught everybody off off guard. They were out buying hand warmers, the, uh, the the silver blankets that they use after the marathon to try to keep people warm, and we just weren't prepared for it. And it's bad for the riders because they're leaving everything behind. Today they're going to load everything into the trailers right. to be taken up to Allegheny College, and yep. so they're not out there with a jacket. They right are not. Either. They are not. So that's why we keep our fingers crossed every year. <laughs> And then last year I missed out on Sunday, but Sunday was just the opposite, is that right? It was yeah, heat. Sun, yeah, it was heat on Sunday. Um, we had ran the two routes last year, um, and I ran the loop back here, back to Pittsburgh. And it was so bad where we hit a uh, road that was uh, just hard and chipped. 
and it was actually so hot the par was coming up and getting picked up on the wheels of the bikes. Also with the, the SAG motorcycles, the motorcycles were helping out, oh, yeah. and it was it was it was it was it was a little bit hairy there towards the end. That's for sure. I bet. Yeah. I think uh, one of the years we were on a road that we knew was recently tarred and chipped, mm -hmm. but the weather was good. And right. So that was, right. It was that firmed was up at that point. Yeah. Right? That was a different story. There, very much so. Um, some of the other thing I remember, we had somebody that had, of all things, they had the tow uh, lock for their feet on the right, pedals. Right, 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 clips. And one of them got stuck. Right, couldn't get it out. <laughs> we had to yeah, we come see, up with an Allen wrench, I think, to get them out of that. Uh -huh. We see, you know, we see the broken chains, we see the, the seat post broken off. I mean, you, you see everything, uh, you know, from the small repairs to the big ones. Spokes blowing out and everything else. Yeah, and thankfully we don't see very much of the medical attention needed, but... Uh, that is correct. We, we, we kind of gauge ourselves with the ride as a whole, with uh, hopefully nobody having to be uh, transported or taken to the hospital. So we've, we've been pretty lucky overall for the last four or five years. If, if we can just go out and enjoy a ride in the country, it'd be a wonderful That's thing. That's exactly right. <laughs> if we're not picking anybody up, we're a lot better off at that point, I can tell you that. Um, something else that I guess was of interest to me was that the, a lot of people that are riding, a lot of people that are here in support, are in support not only of the ride, but they're here in support of someone with MS. Yes, very much so. Actually, uh, that's one of the reasons I'm here also. My sister has MS, and we do see a lot of people, and, and fortunately, a lot of people that have ridden in the past and maybe can't ride this year because of an injury, um, they step up and they're still here helping out one way or the other. They're sagging or they're working with the ham radios or they're volunteering. I have a because my wife's uh, sister-in-law, mm -hmm. and then my eye doctor, and a, a number of uh, people that I know in Conneaut have MS. Right. And at first, it to me was just bikes coming in once a year into uh -huh. Conneaut, and then all of a sudden I start realizing more and more about MS and right. and the needs of MS as far as the, you know, we're supporting research and. Yes, very much so. It's amazing to see. The, the difference in some people you find out have MS and you couldn't tell unless they told you to the extreme cases where you know we had the people uh, that are in the wheelchairs and can't get around any longer but the society and, and the group down here that takes care of this ride they do a phenomenal job <clears throat> you know getting everything organized and to get you know 12 1300 people put together and do this I mean it's obviously a year-round project for them but they do a phenomenal job down there it, it is quite the thing hopefully I'll get time I realize we're we're getting close there I guess are they starting out they're starting at seven o'clock that's what they say we don't have any fog which is good that usually delays us every once in a while but uh, we should be out and rolling soon I drove through some fog on the way down and I think we had a little bit of showers up our way but I got a little sprinkle on the way up nothing severe so hopefully it will hold off for us yeah across the road there's a whole different world uh, hopefully I'll get over there and get a little bit of video of that there's there you like go. a party going on it is there. yeah you got to get them before they get all tired it's yeah. all sweaty <laughs> <laughs> well, they still look good. Yeah. Some of the other things we do as far as support, uh, the guys here, the, the radio operators. Yeah, the amateur, the ham operators, they do a, a, a great job of uh, obviously communications. We'll take some of the um, volunteers or long, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, people from Don Society. They're, you know, working the, um, uh, with the SAGs, uh, making sure that uh, everybody's taken care of. And that's one of the main areas of communication is using the ham operators around here. So between those and the Goldwing motorcycles, uh, they're the guys out there getting everybody across the roads, blocking off traffic, making sure everybody gets through safely. It's quite a thing with the Goldwing riders. I, you know, we'll see them. Probably won't see them here at this first stop. I right. think they go on out. They do. They're and, usually up ahead of us to, to start uh, setting up at the intersection so they can get everybody through. And then they play a little bit of leapfrog. That they was do. interesting. They do. They the, the last set, obviously, after they clear uh, with the last ham and the last sag going through, then they'll jump up to the to the next one, and they just keep kind of building on each other, moving their way up through the course. And that, that thought of needing to jump ahead, Again, to me, you got riders going out of here at seven o'clock, and the first year that I was here, I waited. I wanted to see the start. I had never seen the start right. of, the, of the run before, and so I stayed around. And by the time I got going, you already had calls coming in. Yes, yeah, we got some. We, well, you get those hardcore bikers out front, and they, they're just, you know, 
full blast, and they're done in, in the three, four hours. They, they crank through this. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. And I, I'm there in the back thinking I'm in the place, and I start hearing you rattle off numbers, uh -huh. and those numbers are up the course somewhere. Yep, and exactly. Yep. It's quite the thing. So you have over 1,200 riders that are going to be stretched between Meadville and who yes. knows where. That's it. Exactly. So we'll have them, hopefully we'll have them all in by at the latest 5 o'clock today, and We'll, we'll, we'll button things up and start all over again tomorrow morning. And you're going to go from, well, here they go. Here I guess they go. Maybe yeah, we're can rolling. Turn the camera around and get some. There you go. Okay. And it, I, as the riders are going out, I, I again was thinking that first group that's going out is usually the more experienced riders. The, they have ridden the run before. They or, have been. And they usually, they usually let the um, top 50 uh, fundraisers go out first or some of the, you know, the, the ones that are a little bit obviously a little bit more skilled yeah. in the area of biking out there. I mean, we have we have them from the very skilled to the people that are doing it for the first time just to get out there and do the challenge. That, so. is, that is quite the thing. I, you get out there and you see like the fellow from Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Steeler. Yes, that was yeah, out. a couple years ago, right, right. Uh, who was it? Easton, Eaton, I can't remember his name. But uh, yeah, he chugged along and uh, I think he was one of the guys that actually broke his seat. Yeah, yeah. We had to, we had to get another we had to get another post for his seat on it. Yeah, he was a big guy. He was a, he was a very large guy. He but actually he was, made me look small. He was a determined guy. He was, and he right. made it, uh, and uh, he got through it. And I think actually his mother has MS, is why he was supporting a ride that year. But uh, yeah, you you see, you know, you you see it from all age groups. You see the, I think the minimum age is 12 or 13 to ride all the way from people in their, their mid to late 70s have been doing it for years and they're out there and you know you look at them you're like wow more power to them <laughs> um, some people you know a first ride that's quite the a learning experience it, I mean, it is and if you don't if you're not I actually the first ride uh, first time I did it I rode a, a mountain bike and I didn't have it set up properly and I, I felt it for a couple months after the fact um, and the two years following, I did smarten up and at least get a, uh, a road bike out of it at that point. So it makes a big difference, that's for sure. Well, I guess the radio operators are getting out. I guess we better get <laughs> we better get on a get horse and get go. going. Yeah, we'll be left behind. We're just about ready to get on the road. One of our SAG drivers uh, wanted to check. We have, what, about 10 guys that are going out today, guys and gals that are going out on the route. Yeah. Can you tell people in Connaught your name? Uh, my name is Gershom Evitt. Where are you from? I'm from Butler, PA. Butler. Yeah, and is this the first time you've done SAG? This is the first time I've done SAG, yes. You know anybody with MS? Um, actually, yeah, my brother and a couple of my good friends have MS. And is that why you're SAGing yeah. today? Yeah, yeah. actually, my dad's in the ride. He's, he's been doing it for a couple of years now. Oh, is that right? Yep. Yeah, so you, you, other than passing by him, you hope just to wave when you see him. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to have to pick up anybody we know. No. Yeah. Well, thank you. All right. Take you for a ride. I think this man with the cooler is playing for a better day at the college. All of the riders are meeting here to uh, at the luggage truck to drop off their luggage. It's getting sent on up to Allegheny College for the state tonight. Dave and Daniel, where are you guys from? Oh, I'm from uh, North Hills, it's, uh, Pittsburgh. I'm from the north side of Pittsburgh.
We're at the first rest stop and we had to pick up a rider, the spoke broke on the bike. Can you tell me your name? So my name's Rick. Where are you from, Rick? Uh, Pittsburgh. And how many times have you been on the ride? Uh, nine times. Nine times. And what happened with your bike? Uh, I think I'm just a little too heavy for uh, <laughs> those spokes <laughs> at this point in time. But, you know, but so there's always uh, these guys, they save our lives actually. I said all these people fixing bikes. Yeah, I quite... said, yeah, I, I have no clue just to get on it and go. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you know that it was broken? Huh? How did you? Uh, know? I was. I was getting a little more tr cumbersome to pedal, and then I heard something clicking. And then knew that something was going mm -hmm. on. Yeah, I said. Uh, but I said I've done this nine times. I said and these these guys are always out here. They're always helpful. I said, and they, they won't take any money. That, that's what was <laughs> my going to be my next question. You know, we, we, we try because I'm like that's great. You know they save us. You know like the last guy I was going to give them twenty dollars just to really fix things. No, nope, just donate it to the cause. That's great. So yes, yeah, so that's yeah. why they come out here just to donate their time also. Oh good. So yeah, I think maybe next year I'll donate my time, <laughs> not my body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you. We're here at the first rest stop of the uh, MS-150 Escape to the Lake, and I'm with... Kenny Bay. Kenny, and where are you from? From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And what group are you representing here? Uh, we're actually the Bay family. We're Baywatch here with uh, trying to help out the MS Foundation, All MS right. Society. And uh, family is in how many you have here? Well, I think we had 25 show. We had a couple no-shows, a little, a couple last minute. Uh, the 6 a.m. roll call was a little bit early for some of the people, but uh, had a great turnout. We're really happy with everything. So uh, it's our first year getting involved with the MS Society and uh, and with the MS uh, Bike 150. Uh, but it won't be the last year. We've had a great time. Everybody's been awesome. Mary's been wonderful. Everybody we've met and got involved with has been great. So and and what is it that you're doing? What's what, what's behind me? Well, we're uh, we're giving out crackers, bananas, making a ton of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, which I don't think any of us realize how fast you have to make PB and J's because people eat them a lot. There's a lot of bikers, so uh, giving out water, showing support, and um, and just trying to keep everybody's spirits up and keep them going for the rest of the race. And uh, is there a special reason why you decided to do that? Well, yeah, we've had uh, uh, my father, his sister, um, and and a couple members of our family have uh, have been dealing with MS for the last couple of years. Um, it seems like it's been hitting our family really hard lately. I've just watched my father, uh, you know, seeing what he's been dealing with the last couple of years and figured as a family, we really needed to get together and, and get involved. So it's been, uh, it's been inspirational to, to watch everything that the family has been coming together and doing and, and uh, so that's why we figured we should get involved. Were you familiar with MS before it hit your family? Uh, you know, generally, I mean, it, it's funny because, you know, I have, uh, my, my father's aunt had it, so she's had it for 55 years. She's oh, still going, right? she's still, she's still going strong. She's great. She's, uh, she's a nun at Carlo College, actually. Um, and, um, and so, you know, it, I have watched somebody deal with it. She's been in a wheelchair as long as I can remember. Um, but, uh, but trying to kind of, you know, capitalize on the awareness that the family's been through for the last couple of years uh, and get everybody involved is really what was behind the whole thing. But to me, uh, for me personally, the awareness that the bike run created right. has been a big thing. I started out there in Conneaut just hearing about it every year, you know, the bikes coming into town, you know, and encouraging us to be there. But it wasn't until I started realizing the family members that had it and then other family members that developed it or right. were diagnosed with it, whatever. And then I started getting well, you know, getting a little more involved. Right. In and it's funny, you know, the more the, the more you find out about it when you realize how little we actually know about it. It's uh, it's disheartening, but but then when you realize that there's a foundation here that might be able to do something for us and help us find a cure, that's why we wanted to get involved. They uh, really have a job on their hands. I mean, I appreciate what you're doing today when, and the family is doing. That's quite the thing that you have bikers 
spread out between uh, Meadville and right. where are we now? Right. Where are uh, we now? We're in Moraine State Park right now. <laughs> okay. We're at the bike rental at Moraine State Park, the beautiful bike rental. And I think most of the riders, I think this is pretty much the end of the riders here. So. And most everybody else has gone on. Uh, but that's a lot of area to cover, and uh, there'll be a few more rest stops, a lunch stop coming up in a couple. But it's an awful lot of support. Right. And without guys like you, right. your family, you know, it, it wouldn't be, I don't think there'd be a bike ride. Well, thank you for saying that. And, and you know, especially for the bikers, too, everybody that's got involved. Mary, who's been here helping us, Susan Cook, who is who my contact has been, and is, she's been ushering me through the whole process and seeing what a huge undertaking it is. You know, when you when you think about it in your head, you know, you're like, oh, race, and we figured we were just going to come and make a couple peanut butter jelly sandwiches sure. and do some water, some Gatorade, and we'd be good. It's a huge, huge undertaking. And with how many people it takes to get involved, the fact that there's so many people who care so much about a great cause just makes you feel really good. I'm glad to be a part of it. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks a lot, Don. Appreciate your time. Okay, it's uh, about 12.40 on Saturday and uh, we're about halfway in the MS-150 Escape to the Lake and uh, we're in Stoneboro at school and you're here with one of the, well, I'll let, them, let you tell them who you are and what you're doing. How's that? Okay, my name's Dylan. I'm from Trek of Pittsburgh. Um, we're just here doing technical support for the ride. Um, changing flat tires, adjusting bikes, you know, derailleurs, true and wheels, that sort of thing. Um, any little problems that people have along the way, we're here to give them a hand. A couple other bike shops here as well, but um, we do this every year. Um, I always send at least, you know, one or two people up for a couple days and, uh, you know, we have a good time. Help people out, support the riders that ride out of our shop and, uh, you know, just do the best we can to make everybody have a good time. So there's some fine tuning besides the breakdowns that we're bringing in. There are some that just need a little of this or that, or they find out that their gearing's not right or shifting's not right coming up hills and that. Yeah, a little bit of fine tuning here and there. Um, we top off more tires than you would believe. A lot of people don't uh, top or just pump up their tires before they start, but um, oh, no. once we do that for them, they have a much better time. <laughs> I bet, yeah, things get a little smoother. Yeah. But so. uh, now I just brought in a rider with a flat. I, I am not real into bikes, so I'm a little surprised. Uh, at times I've seen them change tubes out on the route. Yep. Um, but uh, how long does it take if they came on a flat and you need to? Oh, generally, you know, three to five minutes we can have them on the you know back on the road but to be fair you know I've changed thousands of tires so it's yeah. a little different than you know someone that has only done a handful here and there um, and, yeah. and other than the parts it's a donation basis I saw the jar there is it oh yeah any any labors free you know if you want to leave a tip for us we appreciate it but um, you know we're just happy to be up here giving a hand well good and uh, how about the MS are you Familiar with MS, you know the the disease, and is there anyone that you know of that's got MS? I know there's a lot of riders that have somebody in the family, and uh, yeah, I have a number of uh, friends that do this ride because they have you know relatives or uh, family members that that do have MS. Um, you know, luckily nobody in my family does, but you know, or it's nice that we're that they're doing this ride. And I know they raise a ton of money to to help uh, help fight the disease, which is great. Seems to be an awful lot of, of behind the scenes things that go on, and I've been saying it that in Conneaut we would see the bikes ride down the hill and not really realize all that goes on behind the scenes, and you guys are a part of that. Now you started out back at Seneca Valley this morning. Were you there or somebody from your company there? This we were morning? not. This was our first stop today. Um, generally you have two to three stops a day. It just really depends on how many shops are up here helping out and where they're going to need you at any given time. Okay. Um, but you know I'll be here for a few hours and then I'll be down at the finish line till about six o'clock just you know whenever people are rolling in helping them with whatever problems they have getting them ready for the next day and then um, you know, eating some dinner. <laughs> well, thanks for your help and Not thanks for talking to us. Anytime. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're getting ready for a start of day two with Emily Houston Pounds. A Emily, tell something to the people at Conneaut about what you expect for the day today. Uh, I expect it to be easier than yesterday because there's a lot of hills, but it's going to get hot, so hopefully it won't be too hot and I won't sweat too much. <laughs> we're going to see if the weatherman is right today or not. The forecast was for upper 70s, but uh, 
clouds were moving into Conneaut while I was making the trip down here from Conneaut this morning. So we'll see how it goes. I think it was uphill all the way, wasn't it, from Zealand Most of it, yes. <laughs> so I'm hoping for some downhill. And I think they're trying to psych you out this morning. It's downhill, but I think does it, it turn right back into an uphill oh, to get yeah. out of here? Yeah, a little bit. I know uh, other years uh, some of the bikes didn't make it up that. Oh, geez. There's a brick road, I think, coming up out of here. I think so, yeah. Yeah, a little rough there, too. <laughs> Well, good luck to you, and hopefully we'll get to talk to you at the end. All today. right, thank you. All right, we're here just outside of the Harmonsburg and uh, I was driving with my windows down and I was trying to figure out what it was that I was hearing with the windows down. I thought somebody had a radio going or something. I just couldn't figure out. And I came by and I found this gentleman standing beside the road and tell me what it is that you're doing and why. Well, for the pa past few years, uh, as the bike rally went by, I decided to help support in however way I could, piping for the cause, I guess, instead of biking for the cause. Well, my name is Will Hilton. Uh, I'm from Harmonsburg, Pennsylvania. That's uh, just outside of Conneaut Lake. Um, the bike rally has been going by for years. Uh, and uh, over the years, I felt like I should have to support you guys as much as you've supported us over the years, as I have family member that's uh, uh, dealing with the MS situation and so I thought well uh, you should come out here and maybe pipe for the cause while you guys are, are biking for the cause um, and uh, it seems as over the years people have started to figure out that there might be this piper along this route I'm not sure um, uh, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but as long <laughs> as long as we put a good spin on it, that's all that matters. Yeah. Uh, uh. Something to look forward to, uh, I'm sure, when they're uh, starting the ride out. Tonight. Yeah, and I think it's important to know, you know, as people, you know, I might be loud one along the line, but know that there are people all along this bike rally route that are supporting in their own way. Um, you know, whether it be a little child with a flag or just somebody waving and giving them some kind of support um, because we're all in this together. Um, so I think that's the most important thing. And, and again, you, you have to put the best spin on whatever situation you're handed in life. And, and it might as well, um, you, you make it you make it a good time or you make it a bad time and I think it's important to try to make it as good a time as you can while you're doing these important kind of things to raise money so uh, hey I keep up the good work and uh, uh, I guess we'll see you in Conneaut I, I guess so. <laughs> And I, I am doing a, a video for the purpose of showing people what goes on outside of Conneaut. And one of the things that you might have heard going on while we were here as part of the support team, uh, and even some of the non-official support team had to grab a rider that had made a wrong turn at the intersection, got a little caught up in things and went the wrong way. 
One of the things that I found interesting in, in the behind the scenes and talking to people is the connection with MS. Not only is the ride to support MS, but there are supporters, people affected by MS. And we have a gal here that uh, might have a little insight into that. Can you tell me who you are? Hi, uh, my name is Lynn Hilton. I'm the bagpiper's wife. <laughs> okay, and, and, and you're here, why? I was diagnosed with MS uh, in, in uh, 1999. And uh, we've supported the MS ride over the years uh, with Will playing the bagpipes. And, uh, and uh, since I can't uh, do the MS walks anymore, uh, my friend uh, Kevin also rides in the MS bike ride. And uh, we like to support it any way we can. Well, I think that it's a big thing. The, the ride is a little smoother today than it was yesterday, but it sure helps to have some support along the way, something to break up the ride. It's still a long ride, regardless of whether the roads are a little flatter than they were on the trip yesterday. That's it still sure. helps to know that people are out uh, encouraging them on. That's so right. Appreciate what you guys are doing, and I hope to see you again. All right, way to go. Thank you. <laughs> All right, way to go. Thank you. Way to go, guys. All right. Way to go, you guys. <laughs> well, we're at the end of the road. Kanye Township Park. Emily made the run. Uh, it's uh, 214 on June 9th, 2013. We made it. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about the young lady next to you? This is my Aunt Sharon, and this is why I do the ride. <laughs> you guys want to get Thank you. The whole time that I was out today and yesterday, it, it was a common denominator that every, almost everybody involved in the run had somebody that had a, a family, friend, neighbor, whatever, somebody that had MS was doing, yeah. <laughs> no, somebody. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, diagnosed mm -hmm. with MS. And so the ride, for most everybody had a, a more of a meaning than just a ride. Yeah. I was going to say a ride in the park, but this is the only <laughs> ride in the park as far as the day went. It was one tough ride. But it's, it helps you to get through when you have somebody that you're thinking about. There was, well, I saw you when I was <laughs> stopping to talk to the, the person playing the bagpipes. Oh yeah. His wife had MS. <laughs> okay. And so that's why he was out there and she was out there encouraging you guys to go on. But yeah, I, I after I saw them, and was thinking about the the hills yesterday that you yeah. have to have almost have to have something like that unless you're just a uh, you know if you're just that good like the ride and all that stuff but the majority of the riders out here i think were like you that that it was quite the chore yeah riding that ride up and down the hills and uh, even the straights after a day and a half of riding it just got i'm sure got to be a bit of a thing to yep. to make that final journey but it's worth it so <laughs> we, we even throw in the Furnace Road Hill just to make sure that, you, yep. <laughs> that you're uh, satisfied with the downhill there. I don't know, did I, ask, did I ask you the first time where you were from? Albion. <laughs> why don't we talk about that? Or Conneaut, that? whichever. <laughs> One of the reasons why I uh, picked on Emily during the video today is we have a connection between Sharon and Emily and myself and if I could get my wife to come around here probably not she's nope. hiding, hiding behind the camera but why don't you tell us a little bit about the family connections well Don is my uncle and Sharon is my aunt and CAC is my aunt and we all grew up around here so and around here is where? Conneaut and where? And where, Albion and Albion the Albion area now but now you're from Youngstown Youngstown 
So a lot of the riders came from south of here, very far south of here. Mm -hmm. Got to mention the special oh, guys. Yes, and, and I have my my husband in Youngstown who helps me get here. He's my he's my chauffeur and my coach. <laughs> Emily was here in the in the Conneaut area at one time, but she's moved away. It's been a few years since she's actually lived here in Conneaut. Yep. But she comes back to visit at least at least, at least once a year. Yeah. She comes to Conneaut Township Park. So I, I thank Emily for allowing her to. Uh, be on video today uh, to put up with my stumbling and fumbling and thank you for riding thank you for riding for ms for the awareness your riding probably ha for me has as much to do about my interest in ms as sharon being diagnosed with it because uh you know the riders riding into town has just been kind of a a common thing for us here in conneaut we read about it in a paper we might see about it uh on the access channels but it doesn't really mean as much until there's a personal connection. Mm -hmm. You were the personal connection when I found out you were riding, and you know, as you're riding, we find out well, why are you riding. And yep. <laughs> there's a lot of other people in my family and friends that that also have MS. So there's a reason. Uh, it is a fundraiser for research, uh, I believe, for Western chapter, Western PA chapter of the MS. But it's still something that's going to benefit everybody. Yes, it does. It does. And it's just amazing at how many people are willing to give that much of themselves for those that have MS and for a cure. There was an awful lot of people that I didn't get to see today that you guys won't get to see on camera. The motorcycle group, that's, some of them are still here. Uh, from the different towns along the way, there are people that stood out for hours directing yeah, traffic. they were a big help. Uh, fire departments, police departments, uh, a lot of the people were on volunteer time out directing traffic. And uh, it's just, hopefully the little bit of video that I got will give some idea of the magnitude of this ride. It's yes. a, so much more than just some bikes coming down the hill. Right, yes. and, and I would like to say thank you to all of those people that were a part of this that helped. It, it wouldn't be possible without everybody pitching in. Everybody has a part to do. Yes. All right, for the Conneaut Cable Access Channels and Emily <laughs> and Sharon and Don Watson, thanks for watching. Now do I turn on the camera? Ha <laughs> ha